Woohoo! And we're live once again on another Tuesday, and I have a special guest in the house. And Kim, before we get started, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then I will tell everybody what our topic is today. Oh, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Jillian. And thank you again for having me on your live today. I'm so honored and delighted to be here. And I just want to say hi to everyone who is participating with us live as well. Though I can't see you, I can feel you. So i um, just happy to be here. Um, I am Kim Ribich, and I am a certified career transition coach, resume writer, and online profile expert. Um, I like to say, if you are standing at a career crossroads asking yourself, what now? That is where I will meet you to help you connect with your what's next. And I work with my clients on everything from career clarity to strategies for job searches, networking, interviewing, and of course, resume and online presence refreshes to realign with what your what next is. I love it. I love it. What a great overview. And you got a lot of stuff going on there and it's absolutely fabulous. So I'm going to pull up our banner. So today we're talking about quietly social on LinkedIn. And just for everybody to know, both Kim and I are INFJs and INFJs are known for kind of, well, you know, we're, we're, we, we got a lot of stuff going on INFJs, but it's, 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 it's very interesting in that we kind of came up with this topic for the live because we were talking earlier about it seems, you know, we just came out of like, you know, mental health awareness month in May, it seems that so many people are struggling on LinkedIn with just kind of feeling overwhelmed, like there's just so much happening. And we were laughingly saying, and, and, and a, many a truth said in jest, not all of us want to be LinkedIn influencers. We don't <laughs> all want to be out there yelling and screaming and, you know, hey, look at me, look at me. Some of us just want to kind of sneak in, get into LinkedIn and get out again. And a lot of people get actually in so much overwhelm that they just quit or they just say, I'm going off LinkedIn for the next four months because I'm, I'm too, mu too much in overwhelm. Or maybe they got somebody in their family that's got some medical issues and they've got to, you know, kind of rally around and they can't do social media anymore. So we just kind of say, or look, it's summer. So all of a sudden you got people with kids home from school and all sorts of things. So it's kind of this idea, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't want to quit LinkedIn, but how can we do LinkedIn in a way that's good for us? Because at the end of the day, don't you agree, Kim? It's got to be what works for us, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And that can change, like you said, depending on your life circumstance, uh, where you are in your job search. I have clients who are in active job searches, so and they have jobs currently, so they have to be in stealth mode instead of out and about. And seasonally, I don't know about you, but spring and fall, those are the seasons when I feel I'm ready to connect with people and summer and winter, I'm a little quieter on social media because I'm either outside doing something or I'm snuggled in and being reflective. So it really just depends. Not to say that being a viral sensation or a top voice on LinkedIn is wrong. There's no one right way no. to do social. So I'm so excited that we're talking about this today to give people who are maybe a little tentative about whether they should stay or go some ideas of how they could quietly connect. I like that. I like that. And, you know, one of the things that we had talked about before was that LinkedIn actually has lots of features that people might not even be aware of that if you need to kind of take it down a little bit is there ways that you can, there are strategies that you can use, but also some of LinkedIn's features. And I know one thing that I actually learned by accident was a couple of weeks ago, I had 
Tina Jarvit on and we were talking about recruiting and, and headhunters and be, you know, big, basically getting your profile ready for headhunters. And there's a setting on LinkedIn where you can be open to work, but you can just show recruiters or you can be open to work. And I flipped it testing and I flipped the switch. And the next thing you know, I got so many emails and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> and I had to shut it all down. So those are some of the things that you can be aware of that it's like, you can say, no, you know, if you're looking for a job, maybe you just want to be open to recruiters and keep LinkedIn tame and not just now everybody knows and you're getting every single email and every single notification. So um, mm -hmm. Kim, what are some of the strategies that you recommend to your clients to, so that they can be quietly social on LinkedIn? Yeah, the privacy settings is typically where I will go uh, first with a client and walk them through what it means to be visible on LinkedIn, because you can have varying degrees and shades of visible just by uh, toggling those privacy settings. So when you're out there searching for people, you could be on full private mode, they would only see they would see nothing, you would just be anonymous, you could be kind of partially anonymous and just have someone from like my college is Alverno College. So it would say someone from Alverno College, or you could just be completely visible and it would be your name and who you are. So depending on what you're, what kind of research you're doing, you can toggle that back and forth. And it doesn't, it's not just to set it and forget it. If you want to do some specific kinds of research, then you may be toggling between that privacy setting. The other thing, I, um, I think I talk to people a lot about the feed because a lot of people, myself included, will get overwhelmed with the feed. <laughs> and it's that is nothing more than a reflection of our network. So it's it's all based on LinkedIn's algorithms and it will show you a reflection of who's in your network. So if if you're overwhelmed by that, sometimes I ask people to just go back and do a little spring house cleaning of their network. Look at who's there. Um, who do you connect with a lot? Who have you have no idea why you're connected? Maybe um, there is someone in your connections that you just, I, and I had this happen recently where there was someone I was connected with who's um, values and tone I didn't align with and it made me feel kind of icky. So I just disconnected from that person. So do some spring house cleaning, see what your connections are, and then see if your feed changes and becomes a little more supportive and less overwhelming. I love that. I love that. And I remember a long time ago when I learned I could unfollow people, but still be connected so that if I needed to reach out to them, I could, you know, I, but I wasn't seeing their content anymore in the feed. And that helped me with, you know, especially some posts, they just trigger me because of the top or maybe they just post a lot. And there are some people where they just exhaust me because there's so many <laughs> times that they post, but that's none of my business. If they want to post, you know, six times a day, I'm not the police, you know, so it's not me to, to, to do that. And, you know, but also too, sometimes I don't do the feed at all. And one of the things, I think I learned this from um, Kevin D. Turner, who is an excellent person to follow on LinkedIn. And he says that you can set up search filters and you can use LinkedIn search filters and you can follow particular people. So maybe there's like, and you could do a group. So you could say, I want to see stuff from this person, this person and this person because they're important to me. I like what they post. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to learn about them. Um, I, I enjoy their stuff. It teaches me something so that you can set your parameters and have searches. And then you just say, I want to see the posts of these people within the last 24 hours. And then you're seeing fresh content and then if you choose to comment, you can do that and then get in and get out. So sometimes the feed, I find scrolling through the feed 
it can, it saps me. It absolutely mm -hmm. saps me because I just see so much. And then sometimes I'm seeing the same post over and over and over again, and it's not a good use of my time. So that would be my tip too. I love that one. I love that one. And it, it gives us the power back. Sometimes we feel yes. so overwhelmed. We just take our hands off the wheel, but there are things that we can do to help reaffirm some of the boundaries that we need to have based on our preferences and, and just how much energy we can give. I, I, I find it interesting. Sometimes people um, may think that social media is perfect for introverts because it's it's passive, but we forget that it does take energy. Uh, and sometimes it takes the energy away from connecting with people in our lives offline. So yeah. we just have to realize, you know, what we're up for and what we're not, and also just give ourselves some breaks. I like that. I like that. And and also to with with the breaks, you know, set your time limits. Like I, I know a lot of people that actually they have these little timers and they say, I'm going to be disciplined because it's a rabbit hole. And I go down the LinkedIn rabbit hole and, you know, I look up and it's like everybody in my house has gone to bed and it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm still <laughs> doing LinkedIn. And it's like, oh, that's not healthy. So you can, you know, do things like, you know, the Pomodoro, Pomodoro method. I think that's what it's called, where you set a timer for 20 minutes and then maybe you say, OK, I'm going to go on LinkedIn an hour a day. Well, maybe it's more effective to do three 20 minute sessions. I hope that's an hour. I'm terrible at math and then space it throughout the day. So I'm going to do it in the morning. I'm going to do it at lunch and then I'll do it before dinner. And then that's it. I'm off, but you feel, okay, I've gone in and I've done a little bit, which is better than again, saying I quit. I'm not doing anything, you know, empower yourself to do it in a way that works for you. Correct. Love that. Absolutely. And it's the same with messaging too. I, I have a rule that I don't um, do social media on the weekends at all. I'm just not online. I've disconnected. I'm out enjoying nature here, um, connecting with people in my community. So that is the way that I recharge. And sometimes I feel really guilty about that when I see people posting or messaging me on the weekends. And so I like to just prepave that and just say, uh, thank you so much for your message. I My policy is just that I, I don't message or post or do social media on the weekends, and I will get back to you uh, during the week. It's just so they know that I'm not trying to blow them off or anything, <laughs> you know, or exactly. ignoring them. Um, and that makes me feel a little better about it as well. Just, and I don't, we, there's no apology that's necessary. I, I see posts sometimes on social media saying, I'm sorry, I've been off social media for a long time. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to feel guilty. It's like, oh, I snuck off to just, you know, go do something with my family. I went for, a, I went to exercise at the gym. I feel guilty. And we shouldn't. If anything, it's too bad we don't have like office hours. Like, you know, when you do like a Google, like, you do like the Google my business page, which is now called something else. But anyways, it has your actual hours. And wouldn't that be nice on LinkedIn in your banner? It just showed you worked from this hour to this hour in this time zone. Because I think that's the other thing about LinkedIn. It's worldwide 24 mm -hmm. seven. And most of us are not just saying, oh, I'm only going to talk to people in Las Vegas. Like people are not just like only my city. It's like, no, it's like you go out beyond your city, beyond your country, your state, you know, the world. And, you, you know, every once in a while I'll go, those people in Australia, it's Monday morning and I'm, it's a Sunday and I feel bad, <laughs> but I think they know, you know, they know that like, okay, America's, you know, we're, we're all, you know, reading the New York Times in our pajamas. We're not doing anything today. <laughs> but I like that idea of setting your boundaries and, you know, people will begin to know, hey, Kim takes the weekend off. She doesn't, even when I, you know, don't do stuff. And you can have policies of like, like I like to sneak in on a Sunday night and I take the weekend off too. So I don't do Saturdays and I don't do Sundays and I don't post and I usually don't comment either. But I'll sneak in on Sunday night just to see 
is there a bunch of stuff that maybe I've been mentioned and I'll go mm. and I'll do a search for my own name to see if I've been mentioned in the post in, in somebody else, maybe they've done a shout out or something and I would feel terrible if I ignored them. And then I might respond to those so that on Monday, I'm not overwhelmed that here's this backup of the whole weekend. So, you know, I think we can all find those strategies that work for us. Oh, I love that too. Just a longer runway before you hit the ground or you take off on Monday is uh, is such a nice thing. And I, I know a lot of people with uh, who are INFJs, HSPs, love the runway. It's just, it gives you space to breathe so that then you can go in and really have meaningful connections. Um, and speaking of meaningful connections, uh, we've talked about this before. I want to ask you about posting and mm. engaging on LinkedIn. I, there are lots of recommendations about what is best practice, but I'm so curious to hear what your perspective is on how to engage on LinkedIn. Okay, well, I learned from John Asperian. So John Asperian is my mentor. He runs the Expresso Plus community and I always put a plug in for John because I absolutely love being a member of his community. And one of the things that I learned from John is he talks about that we kind of go through different stages as we're getting on LinkedIn. And it doesn't mean you have to go all the way through them. You might just stop at one particular stage. So he recommends start as a consumer, consume posts, you know, mm. read posts, whatever. And and then when you feel comfortable, the next step is to be a commenter. So you're much more likely to get engagement at the beginning by commenting on other people's posts. And that's a good way to get visibility. They should be thoughtful comments and getting to know people. And I know myself, I began following people that I just liked their content, whether it was about LinkedIn or books or psychology, all those topics, video, all the things that I'm interested in. So that's being a commenter and then move on to being a creator. And I think that, and, and then once you're a creator, you really should figure out, you should be doing way more commenting than creating posts. And I think that's the mistake hmm. people make. And this is what can send us into overwhelm. If you're one of those people where you're doing 30 days of video, I'm gonna do a video every day, or I'm doing 365 days of posting. Well, then you have to put into your schedule, not only making the post, but how do you respond to the comments? Because this hmm. is not a put it up there and bang it out to the world. It's like each post is a conversation. And so if you don't have the stamina to do that, then you have to cut it back. And I actually did that. I only post maybe about two or three times a week because every time I post, I go, can I handle the conversations and the comments that this post hopefully will generate because nobody wants crickets, right? And if I don't have the time or the energy, I don't post. So that would be my answer. You know, know what your own energy level is and know that it, it is much better strategy to set your time to engage not only on your own posts, but other people's posts as well. So I don't know the numbers, but I think it's almost like 10 to one, 10 comments, you know, for every one thing you post or something along that line. Oh, so wow. does that make sense? Yes. And oh my gosh, that is such a relief to hear too, because I I sometimes see these super posters uh, and I think, oh, should I be doing that? There's a lot of pressure around that. I love the idea of commenting more than you post because there is something to about there are many days where I just feel like going on LinkedIn and being a cheerleader, being a yes. supporter, just supporting others in my community. And so a congratulations, a quick note saying so proud of you. That yes. to me feels like it's it's more about the giving than the spotlight. Uh, this is more lamplight than spotlight, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And that's truly, you know, do I want the spotlight or do I just want that little teeny lamp so that I can see stuff? And I think also too, setting this idea of 
it's better to be consistent and know what your what your limit is. And so I think mm. you're better off saying, I would like to post once a week or once every two weeks, then do eight posts. And then we never hear from you for four months because people mm. go to your profile, people go to your activity feed and they might see post, 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 and then crickets for six months. And they think, you know, and LinkedIn will actually, it's not that they penalize you, but if you go a really, really long time without posting, they, there's no activity. It's like you go to somebody's feed and it's like, there's nothing. It's like it blanks them out. Now, I don't remember what that time period is, but there was a couple people and I went, well, that's weird. I know that they posted something before and LinkedIn just kind of goes almost like you're inactive now. So I think you're better off setting realistic, consistent posts, even if it's once a month, once every two weeks, do what you can do and, you know, and then just comment. Now, Kim, you had talked before about you have a strategy where you go on LinkedIn and you put people first and, and you go into the DMs. Is that correct? Yes, I, I think people would be surprised to find out how active I am on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. it's just not visible outwardly. I do a lot of direct messaging on LinkedIn and most of my conversations are happening there. I think it's just it's just my my preference to have deeper connections with people and I like mm -hmm. to develop that over time. So I will reach out to someone I'm just I admire, I love what they do, I'm curious about what they do, I will reach out that way and just start asking questions to mainly to learn. I, I think I'm a lifelong learner as well and LinkedIn is great for that. You, It's like having a professional conference at in yes. your office every single day. So you can go and ask questions and just developing the conversation over time. And when we get to a point where we want to share more, then we can hop on a, a LinkedIn video chat just right there and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Getting to know people in my network is also helpful because then I know how to help them down mm. the road. I know what they need. I know what kind of support they're looking for. And it, it helps you bridge connections. So you might know someone who's looking for someone in the outdoor industry and you happen to know a recruiter in the outdoor industry and you want to connect them. And that, again, it's just that spirit of giving, I think, is what motivates me to be online and what I enjoy so much about the LinkedIn community. I love that. I love that. And I think, you know, you touched on the thing that I've always said that it's like LinkedIn is about people to people. It's always mm -hmm. people first. And I think if you have that mindset and you think about how do I want to approach LinkedIn and just recognizing that just because somebody is not in the front light doesn't mean that they're not backstage doing a bunch of stuff. And so they could be sending voice messages. They could be sending texts. They could, they could be sending videos. I know a lot of people that they will never, ever post a video to the LinkedIn newsfeed because they just don't want to put themselves out there and not necessarily get the feedback that they're hoping for. But they feel really comfortable on a one-to-one -one basis just putting a video in the DM and saying, you know, hey, happy birthday. I heard it was your birthday or, you know, something along that lines. So do what's comfortable for you. Text, voice messages, all sorts of different things. And these are just ways that you can kind of be quiet. And, um, you know, because I love to say you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> It's part of our rights. It's part of our rights. It's not just for the police. It's for you. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. I love that. I love that. So, so let me, let me speaking, speaking of conversations, we've got uh, a lot of people that are uh, commenting and part of our, and I don't want them to remain silent. So I want to give them a voice today. So we'll, we'll pop them up. So we've got Jeff Young. He's joining us. Greetings from Columbus, Ohio. Jillian and Kim love the being quietly effective and social on LinkedIn topics. So that's great. Thank you for sharing, Jeff. And he's just, uh, you know, 
again, here is a way that you can quietly support people is joining LinkedIn live events, LinkedIn audio events. And these are a way that you can learn, you can network with others, and you can do it in your PJs because you're, you're in the back, you're in the background and nobody sees you. So it's a great, wonderful way to uh, do stuff on LinkedIn. So that's great. Mary Wu, fingers crossed. I had a heck of a time getting here today, but you're here now, Mary. <laughs> and that's here. the main thing. When you're here, you're here. We love that. We love that. And fortunate. So that's nice. I, I love when people are just fortunate and feeling gratitude. Hopefully they're fortunate that, that they, they got here today. You never know. LinkedIn's always doing shenanigans. Kim is helping folks figure out what they want to be when they grow up. Well, you know, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out. And I think, you know, we're all building the plane as we're flying it. We're just works in progress. I love that. I love that. And I, I like the whole idea of the runway metaphor, because if you think about it, you know, I'm thinking about like the people that you're talking about that you help with the career transitions. And, you know, if you're making a transition, sometimes you have to stop before you can move forward. So you have to really stop and, and be quiet and think about where you want to go next. But then you need that runway before you can actually take off. So um, I, I, I love metaphors. I'm just in love Me with too. them. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Marcia. Uh, hello, Jillian and Kim. Kim, you got a lot of initials. Well, well that, that's a yeah. lot of that's a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> I love the alphabet, and I just seem to uh, be obsessed with adding more. To I love it. I love it. We'll send you back to school so we can get some more letters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. so, so I love this. She says, uh, "Jeff, I decided I'm never growing up." So <laughs> that's, that's either is, is that part of either it's like a Peter Pan thing or a Toys R Us kid because that used to be a commercial here i don't know if anybody sing. i used to sing that and i was like that's my Me too toy song. Kids. Mm -hmm. I love it. i'm never growing up i'm never growing up oh they're just <laughs> laughing and and this is always what's so nice is that people can they're 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 having conversations in the linkedin live studio so that's kind of cool so we got martin henley who forever i will say the word niche because he taught me to say that word niche and uh, woo -hoo -hoo, I'm watching this live, which is great because he is way across the pond and um, he's a fabulous marketer. I, I tell everybody, go over and watch his talk marketing show because he's fabulous on YouTube. So yay, Martin. I'm so glad Hello, you're here. Martin. Yes. Yeah. Um, Annette says, love the term quietly social. I do too. <laughs> I do too. Because it, it, it just comes across as, you know, the, the, the LinkedIn whisper. And, you know, for the life of me, I can't remember who that is. But I know somebody in the audience, they identify as being the LinkedIn whisperer. But, mm. you know, it's the same thing. It's like when you whisper, guess what? People lean in. They lean in. And so I think... When you talk quietly, it doesn't necessarily mean you have nothing to say. And if you think of the word quiet and, and the difference between quiet and quitting LinkedIn, we all don't, you know, get rid of that E, you know, if you, if you get rid of the E, then you're quitting LinkedIn, keep the E, E is for energy, excitement, empowerment, <laughs> and then you're still doing LinkedIn quietly. I'm just, I'm just going that crazy today. Brilliant, Julian. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't yeah. even take, I didn't even figure that out in the shower this morning. That's usually where I do my good thinking. So that Catherine was says, the nugget. <laughs> it was, it was, it's like the E. Okay. Annette Richmond, so do I, it really resonates. So it, it's, yeah. it's really, it's really nice. I'm, I'm yeah, glad that and this I is resonating for the, the, and the thing is that a lot of people think that introverted means antisocial and it really no. doesn't. People no. who have inter, um, introverted preferences really like deep connection, actually. Uh, so small talk is sometimes really hard to do, but the connect, everybody wants to be connected in some way or another. So it's not antisocial at all. I think we, and with 900, is it 900 million people or members 
on LinkedIn now, we can find billion, a billion, day. trillion. <laughs> so what it is now, I don't know. But with that many members on LinkedIn, we can find people who get us and who want to be social in similar ways. Like today, what you're doing is you're creating a community of people who can be social in a relaxed and safe and comfortable environment. And I would just encourage people to go out and find those people on LinkedIn. Your people are there. Yes, I agree. I agree. And, you know, so many people that I have met on LinkedIn, they have crossed from being colleagues to being friends. Um, you know, we, we set up times to like maybe Zoom once a month or, you know, or once a quarter or something like that. We have conversations in the DMs and it could just be, was, was, was that a strange post I posted, you know, cause I'm overthinking <laughs> it, you know, because like, that's what we do. Sometimes we post something and we go, I don't know, I was struggling. Maybe I shouldn't have posted this. And then, you know, you call a friend, you DM a friend and they're like, Oh my God, that was a great post, you know, or they're like, delete it yeah, yeah. Like they're that. the people you who know? will tell you the truth too right exactly. we need people like that exactly and so you create these tribes and so you get to know that like these are my peeps they 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 have my back and you know they become connectors maybe they introduce you to other people i've gotten to know so many great people through other people and that's all part of linkedin so there's sometimes more stuff going on in the background than there is in the foreground of linkedin and that's so a great way to true. do it so true that's a great way to do it so um teaching linkedin what you want in the feed is a great tip kim and so true so true just Teach, teach, you know, you know, hit that whip and teach that <laughs> algo. This is the way we want to do things. This is the way we want to do things. Quality over quantity. That's usually my go-to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. Um, amazing. We always get like 30 minutes and it's like, whoosh, it's all gone. It goes by. So, um, <laughs> It goes by really, really fast. So Kim, do you have some um, some sort of like takeaway for us today that you, you want to share before we close out? Oh my gosh, your quote from Susan Cain really inspired me. So I went and I found another one from Susan Cain to bookend. Mm -hmm. And the quote is, stay true to your nature. If you like to do things slowly and steadily, don't let others make you feel like you have to race. If you enjoy depth, don't force yourself to seek breath. And um, and then I have one more from, I love quotes, Jillian, I love quotes. So Ralph Waldo, well, Ralph Waldo Emerson, this one is to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. So just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And I would love to quietly be social and connect with people uh, who are here today and listening to the recording. So feel free to send me a lovely message in DM and let's start a conversation. I love that. I love that. And I too absolutely love quotes because great thought leaders out there. Well, thank you very much for being here today, Kim. Um, I think this is a really important topic. I hope that we have stopped one person from quitting LinkedIn and just saying, <laughs> yes. you know what, I'm going to just get out of the back seat, get in the front seat. I'm scooting over. I've got the wheel and I am going to take control of this LinkedIn video, you know, this LinkedIn vehicle and get where I want to go. And it's okay to drive with, you know, the, the radio turned off. <laughs> I just, it's okay to be in silence. That is okay by me. That's okay by me. Another metaphor. I will You've not got stop. two, at least two people who are along for that ride. <laughs> There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. And this was just a fab, fab conversation. And I'm looking forward to talking to you all again next week. Okay. Bye, everybody.